Wow. Wow, I guess I must not be a powerful chair. You don't even show up at my public hearing. Um, I'm sure who's here. You're not taking input? <laughs> huh? Are you going to be taking input from the group? Uh, what group are you with? Well, I'm here to discuss housing issues. Well, um, what organization are you with? Myself. Occupy Honolulu. Occupy Honolulu. Mikiki Neighborhood Board. Huh? Mikiki Neighborhood Board and Machinist Union. I'm a representative for the machinist. All right, yeah, come on forward. I mean, we have an hour. We'll use it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let, let's have the guy in blue. He was the one who... Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm not really ready, but I'm going to go for it. Go for it. All right, I'm uh, a resident of Next Step Shelter. Next Step Shelter. Yes. I'm a physicist by education graduated with honors from the University of Hawaii. I live in Hawaii. Okay. Approximately 40 years. Uh, fighting the rent versus wages battle. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> four years ago, uh, I was managing a condominium, uh -huh. and I've done that since college. Okay. A as well as well as working for somebody like Lewis Packard. Oh, can you can you hold that one minute? Can you have them make a call to public housing? How come they're not here? Okay. I mean, this is embarrassing for the people of Hawaii that our uh, leaders here are not here. This is very embarrassing to them. Okay, go ahead, sir. And so. Uh, uh, having come from the mainland many years ago when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different varieties of housing on the mainland. Oh, okay. so and uh, one of the things is that around the I, I don't think this housing okay. crunch is going to go away. It seems like it's an uh, endemic mm -hmm. the islands, the way they've handled um, uh, zoning and planning. It seems to be more geared towards Asian and European based on our own cheap Well, the thing is, like, uh, uh, the cost of housing is almost out of sight compared to the mainland. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things that going to go away yeah. and they don't want to uh, build yeah. housing yeah. for about 40,000 of our people. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot right now in the market, it's both here on the mainland, you have shipping containers, of using shipping containers in an, uh, an architecturally well-designed uh, environment, <coughs> on <coughs> public lands, that as the time goes on, uh, if they no longer need it in three, four, five years, they can revert back to being shipping containers or storage containers. Okay. And at the same time, in the interim, they can provide housing for a lot of people. Uh, I've lived in one. Uh, I currently own one that's used in storage. And it's uh, they're 45 feet long and 8 feet wide. So this, they're larger than most uh, studio apartments. Uh, have I heard your testimony before? Because I've heard about these containers before. What's that? I've heard about these containers. Have you come here before to talk about those containers? Uh, no, I haven't. Actually, I've done designs, though, for them. Uh, okay. When I was in high school, I was going to be a, an architect. That okay. Kind of but um, the, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, uh, but um, I've heard about these containers before, and you said about open public lands. The issue here, the challenge is public land, open public lands. Uh, not necessarily. There's, there are people that have, <coughs> uh, let me think of a place. In Kimoko Street, for about 12 years, 13 years, there was a huge city block, okay. totally vacant, okay. not used. And we'll eventually, open. Walmart, Walmart okay. came in All right. and uh, right. built there. Uh, there are I think to their private land. That was private land. Okay. okay. You have no control over private land. No, no, I understand that. But you could make it attractive. Just like they, they go in and they bulldoze down old properties, okay. and they put in parking lots for years, something sits in the parking lot. Very low income for the amount of space it's taking up. Okay. Uh, here is a, a, a situation where you could provide, you could solve the social need, do it reasonably economically, and when the time came that it was going to be built on, okay, okay, when when all the permitting, all the financing, and everything else came okay. together, you could literally pick up what's there and move it to another location. Okay, sir, so I'm going to give you an assignment. Great. Find me that land. I will work with you in getting it. But well, that's that's the tough one. <laughs> that's the tough one. That's the tough one. Okay. When you find that land, you come to my office, it's 442, it's a representative Cabanilla. I think we need to talk about this land okay. and work together and see what we can come, come up with. Okay, the actual, the, the containers themselves in bulk, if you buy them, you know, more than, say, Right, but the challenge is where to put the container. It's $2,000. No, no, where to put them up. Okay, well, let me, let me give you some of the economics of this. Right. Okay. Well, but we cannot talk about the container until you find the land to put it. Okay, we're talking about 40 by 10 square feet. 
Okay. And you can stack them nine high. Okay. So even on small parcels of land, you could house 60, 70, 80 people or okay. small families. Okay. So there's an economy of scale there that's not being utilized. That's what I'm here to testify for. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Next. You. I'd like to add on that. Okay. Uh, my name is Cart. Uh, my name is Gavin Mitchell. I'm a neighborhood board rep, long-time neighborhood board rep in the Rikiki area. Okay. And I'm also a trustee with the Sheenus and Aerospace Works, okay. uh, Local 1998, which is um, represents federal employees and private sector employees who are working mostly for the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Now, in the past, uh, I've been living here all my life. Um, in the past, I was a presidential elected for a while twice. So I know politics. Um, I wrote a resolution support exactly what he's talking and it was passed at the Democratic Party Convention. Correct. So I'm at modular housing. I, I'm fully aware of all of this because I've been the chair for the last nine right. months and I hate to, to disrupt you, but the challenge here is where to put it. Yeah, exactly. And if you remember reading that reso that was passed twice by the okay. next thing, and it did have, last time we had it here, it had signatures. You know, can you, excuse me, sir, can you get the man's name? Sure. Uh, if we We'll work together in finding land for his uh, thing. Okay. Okay. So we, we passed resolutions at the Democratic Party Convention. We brought it up and we passed it through the Senate with uh, most of about half the senators signing on last time. He was killed in this committee last time because uh, some people from the Carpenters Union were, were basically, they didn't, they didn't like the idea of uh, building homes with steel frames. Mm -hmm. um, that whole <coughs> issue about land has to do about building mostly properties on the big island, which land is very cheap because you can't get insurance because yeah, the lava in the area, the houses are made in such a way that they can be moved. Uh, one of, the, the, one of the, the ideas was to form a park, uh, donate a land for, that goes to the city and county park and put a lien on it that allows people to move their home there temporarily if the lava flow comes within a mile of their house. Um, by doing that, you will be able to uh, have build homes with solar panel and water catchment systems that are independent from energy, mm -hmm. and basically have an area set up where it can be temporary until the lava flow goes uh, cool down and can be back to a lot so you don't lose yeah. the land. That will allow insurance companies mm -hmm. to basically insure properties because basically you're just insuring the, the, the home. Right? Right. It's not a trailer park in any way. It's a regular home that breaks down. You can either use containers or you can have homes set up. Now, um, I told you I worked at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. Right now, we have a ton of people with skills. The welders, chip fitters, they're all retiring within the next five or six years. We have a massive amount of people with property on the Big Island in the Mountain View area that they well, are looking at forming a corporation to put together these homes and build solar pit panels and water catchment systems in them so that they can form. Uh, Are these pro bono donated or they want No, money? They're, they're, they're looking at doing it themselves. Because okay, it's free. It's free. It's okay. like, it's like oh, habitat okay. for the humanities. It's like, you know, it's, it's basically, so we get together and we form a, a hui, which basically <coughs> uses the skills of the people that, that are skilled tradesmen to put together the, uh, uh, kit homes to develop these, the, uh, these properties. That would eliminate a lot of stuff. And of course, a lot of the labor unions, most of these guys are union guys anyway. I mean, I'm with the Metal Trades Council, which is represented <coughs> as many people as the building trades. So what you need is land, first of all. We need land, and you need skill labor. Well, you said you're gonna provide the skill labor. So well, we're, we're, we, we have people on the Big Island that already have the skills. Okay, so, so, so we're, so we're forming, we're, yeah, we're, we're, so we're, 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 looking at, we're looking at making a hui to develop the land for the Big Island, in areas that you can't get insurance because of it's in lava land, uh -huh. okay, where the properties are cheap. So who do you think was going to buy the insurance? Well, what we were thinking about doing is forming a corporation that has the trucks that can move it, where the insurance will go through the company that that, that moves the actual home. So the other words, it would be like a, a the company would ensure that they would move their home if if the lava flow came about within a mile. Who's going to put it, all this together? <coughs> we're in the process of doing that. Okay. It hasn't not been formalized, but we've been looking at it for the last five years. That's why that resolution has been passed twice at the Democratic Party Convention. Who's going to put it together? 
I don't know what's going on on Pig Island, but you know, like, what, 60, 70% of the houses is here on this island. Right. You know, and uh, most of them is actually sitting right in District 6 for, for city and county. Uh-huh. Uh, the PT area. Yeah, right, right, right. Honolulu how how we that. guys don't go there? Huh? How come we don't go to the shelter? <laughs> how come we don't go to the shelter? Yeah, how come you go to yeah, Thomas Square? I'm supposed to go to a shelter. Hold on. Okay, Occupy Honolulu is there because of what's going on with uh, all the shelters. Like the next step, I mean, uh -huh. I, I, I'm sure you read the news. You know, I mean, that place is atrocious. I mean, they don't have uh, public restrooms or restrooms that's available. You know, besides, like yeah, besides outside, you want to sit there and use a porta potty your know, whole life. Uh, and then they, well, excuse me, I'm, I'm a recent resident of the next step. Mm -hmm. I've got about yeah, yeah, but this is a, a, this is this is not Chilton, you know. <laughs> no, 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 to address that, okay? okay, since there's so many people that want to sit there and discredit that. Right now, the city and county, that you, what? You can write about it all you want. Okay, okay. But you guys spend I, I millions apologize. of dollars, you hand it over to the city and county for them to be a bunch of uh, high school bullies. Yeah. They run around and beat and steal from people all over the freaking island. That's right. And when you put them in a shelter that's sitting there that's it's smaller di dimensions than I am, mm -hmm. that means you crank them into a place. They can sit in a tent and have more room than what they give them. Okay, so the problem you know, is there's not enough room for a person. No, the problem is you're not addressing the real issue. What is causing these people to be on the street? The not problem, affordable housing. I know no, that. It's not even like yeah. affordable yeah. housing because your idea yeah. of affordable housing is 350000 for a second house that should be uh, 40000 on the mainland and condensed. So I don't, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, but that's not Hawaii. Hawaii is yeah. expensive. Oh, you know, if you drop the housing market, there's a 40000 bar. For, then maybe uh, you guys should be looking at a living wage. Mm. Give a wage that people are able to live here so they're not on the street. Right. And when they do find them on the street, instead of beating and stealing from them for a year or two, uh -huh. where they have no trust in the whole system yeah. at all, and they're just against you guys completely, get them off the street in a month or two and put them in a program that, that teaches... Uh, resume building, you know, computer skills, so they can find jobs, job location, job training. Mm -hmm. That is a much right, more efficient way. Right, but we're going to attract 100,000 more uh, homeless from the mainland to start doing that. <laughs> we just don't want well, to have it. Well, guess what? It doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. yeah what do you come from? I've been here 45 years. I'm mm -hmm. a native of Hawaiian now. Oh, yeah, this gentleman I'm talking to. Okay. I'm from Chicago. Right. I'm, I'm sitting at Thomas Square because right. of the reason or, or the, the inactability from the state to control what's going on with the city and county and beating and stealing from I had an apartment in Waikiki. I work. Yeah. I have 13 years of college underneath me. So don't assume that I'm houseless and that I'm some degenerate that's not able to take care of themselves. Right. You should be looking at me as a, uh, as a person, a taxpayer, client, mm -hmm. that is giving you some realistic ideas here of stop beating and stealing from the city and county and if the city and county is not representing you well, you have the control in what they're doing. Take their money, audit them, and find out where they're inefficient at controlling what you guys I are had, trying I had to a promote. Hearing that. Last week, about all the thousands and millions of dollars that went out for yeah. homeless people, I didn't see you in that room. You should have been there. Well, maybe if you make things a little bit, uh, make it more notified or put it out there more that these yeah, things are going on, right? right. Exactly. You don't hear about all this. Just because you put a little notation on a website that's really, I'm sorry, someone needs to work on it. So, so you, you, you think that I should go to Thomas Square and tell everybody I have a public hearing about all this? You should no, come to Thomas Square. Something in a newspaper, there's something that big. Something that has thousands of people sitting in one little area that's affecting you. Hey, buddy, you mm -hmm. control your voice. Yeah. You know what's in the room now? <laughs> so I'm going to march in the room. We can pick you up and take you outside. So let okay. Take it, you, know. you can take I know me outside. Pass, you know you're passionate about it, and I can understand yeah, it. Yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, if you if you don't like what's going on and you see that there's a situation, instead of pushing them around more or trying to find all these millions more dollars, taking resources away from the people that's making it so expensive here, yeah. be more efficient with it. If okay. the city and county isn't representing you well with the millions that you give them, audit them. Find out where they're not being efficient at, like Bill 54, Bill 39, all these bills that literally allow them to beat and steal from people. 
And that's, well, that's wrong. You, you don't treat people like that, no matter what the situation is. And you use an excuse that, well, they'll just move over here. Yeah. The continent's much bigger, and the continent's much cheaper. Okay? That doesn't make people want to say, I'm going to move to Hawaii so I can be houseless. You, you're talking maybe 2% of the people that's here. Huh? 20%. 20%. Show me the figures. Show me where show me where it actually says that there's literally 20% of them that move here to be houseless. Or is it Well no 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 they don't have they can come here to be houseless. Exactly. But so what's causing you to be houseless? But we can have twenty percent of the people from elsewhere and promise them up an apartment. No, we can't. No, we can't. We don't have enough resources for that. So you're saying that the twenty percent of the people come to Hawaii do not expect to be homeless. I agree with you. They don't expect to be homeless. They expect mm -hmm. that somebody else will house them. No, but unfortunately, no. the real matter here is the people, the taxpayer, Hawaii, can't afford that. So how are you going to address it? Because they're going to still come. Okay. Well, Maybe hold some of these companies accountable, right? Like the city. The, okay, let's you talk got, about that. That's good. Yeah, you got well, Hawaii County, right? right? They they charge one hundred fifteen thousand dollars for in lieu fees per unit. So like, say you yeah, got a, a building of four hundred apartments, right? Four hundred apartments. The, the twenty percent that comes to Hawaii will be responsible in housing them. That's what he's telling me. You're gonna let me speak? Yeah. Okay. In Hawaii That's County. That's what he's telling me. That, that let, you're gonna let me speak. Okay. In Hawaii County, if you have a building of 400 apartments, so like the company comes in and wants to put a 400 400 apartments, 10% uh -huh. of them is supposed to be allocated for assistance housing. Uh -huh. Because we gotta be careful about the whole affordable housing term. Because the city and county has changed that. I agree with you. Okay. So if you got assistance housing sitting there. And if they don't want that type of clientele in their building, they charge them a fee of 115000 The city and county here charges them 4700 bucks. That doesn't find any more housing. That doesn't help the situation, right? Uh -huh. But right there, if you charge 115000 what do you do? You put the responsibility on the companies that's coming here that's providing that, and at the same time controlling the amount of corporations or businesses that's coming to the islands. So if you don't want these corporations here, if you don't want the people here, make it harder. What? But if they're going to be here, make them be accountable for what they're charging here. Your rent costs are outrageous, right? And you say, well, that's to keep the clientele, to keep the people from wanting to come here because it's so expensive. But still, people are still going to come. You can't, you can't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to make this, uh, I'm going to board this whole place right. up and nobody's going to come here. Well, Unless you want to be independent, and then we can sit there and talk to the governor, and he can sit there and be a man about it and say that the United States should be here. But until that happens, you're going to have to deal with people moving. And the only way you're going to do that is if you start holding these companies accountable. Which companies are we talking about? You talk, any, anybody that wants to come in here with a with an apartment complex and think that they can get away with being in Oahu, the most expensive area of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and only pay $4,700 out for an in-loop fee, for the city and county to steal $3.2 million of it, put it in the general funds, and throw it towards the uh, rail, and then lose $900,000 on top of it that the city, the city auditor can't even locate. That's a, that's a misappropriation of funds. And that was also mistrust by the taxpayers that was invested into that to help solve this problem. That's where you guys are missing. You're going after all this stuff, and a lot of it's good ideas, but you're not attacking the real problem. The real problem is the way the city and county is addressing the situation. And their address is to be, steal from them. They don't hold anybody else accountable, nor themselves. The state should be looking into why is there such a huge influx of houseless people on this island here? Well, the and, are right. right. And why, it, it, that's, a, that's the real point right there, when you say, well, everybody's going to keep moving. It's so much cheaper on Big Island. It's way cheaper there. But well, people are staying well, there, and they get the same kind of You can force people to go where they want to go. That's, we, we Most that. of them are moving here. From the islands? Yes. Yeah, because of the jobs. Most, you talk to them, they're moving from Maui, Big Island, and everything here. This influx is happening here. So you need to address the, the situation of why is that happening? So you it, want government to pull jobs from yeah. out of the air? So no, are. listen to me. I want you to audit the city and county okay. right. and, and, and make sure that the appropriations of the funds that you're giving them by the taxpayers of the whole state mm -hmm. is being appropriated correctly. Is it being used in a humane way? Is it being used efficiently? Is it being is it put in a way that's leaving opportunities for people to get off the street so you won't have to keep funding all this? Because not only is the resources being extracted by what you're saying is land and housing, 
but it's being distracted by people's money through trying to keep them on the streets with health care, food, all this stuff that's going on. It's distracting resources. Can you give your name and phone number if you have a name and phone number? The yeah. next time I, I talk to people, the appropriate money out, and you come and, and yeah, we will. Be in the car you go. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have a, another healing on uh, Thursday, right? Yes. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Okay. We'll, we'll have the Department of Human Services will be here. Okay. And then the um, uh, what do you call that agency now? I've got helping hands. Helping hands of like they've got seven hundred thousand. <laughs> They'll be here. So let me call the director. Okay. And I'll talk to you more. I, I won't be. I won't bore you. I won't have to finish that. Sir, thank you so much. As I understand it, uh, that today is about specifically and Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 I was telling my staff, I said, no, 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 Have been occupied without Act 169. Are there any units now that have been offered? The, the severe ones, uh, at least 22, 
Now we can go to uh, Act 116. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Uh, although I made a tremendous amount of improvements in the uh, in the process of evictions, uh, the Act 116 uh, has got to as we mandated by HUD and others to change the admin rules to mm -hmm. be able to implement it. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, we have taken it, we have uh, added the language necessary to comply with Act 169. Uh, I mean, Act 160. I'm sorry. Uh, and <coughs> Ten minutes to the next hearing, so we'll choose. No, actually, we have that um, clock's not right. I, um, I have 9.36 is the time, by the way. <laughs> we have uh, Handle Dances with Pigs, it says uh, Thank Nova. <laughs> Oh, let's check his email. Kidding, <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> probably wondering where it is right now. <laughs> um, one of the issues that we're going to be talking about is Kent City. And that's not a bad idea. Right. So the education we have to get. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, Kent City has done is they've been able to learn concurrence. There needs to be a little somewhere where it should be controlled. And my suggestion, and I've talked this over with Occupy and some people, Put it right next to the police station. Right on the, 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 the park on the top of the police station. And one of the biggest. Oh, you mean here? Yeah, right up there. <coughs> and the reason why I, I feel that's important is you know, you don't want drugs, you don't want crime, you, you need to be controlled. And the best way to do it is to put it in an area where it can be controlled and it can be, it, 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 it can be worked on. Um, that's a perfect thing. That's perfect park because hardly anybody uses it. Park right next to the police station. Right on the roof of the parking garage. Okay. 
Okay? And, and what the city could do is take some of the, the camp equipment they took from Occupy and lend it out to the homeless where they have to turn it in at the end of the day. They so took a lot. Right down. And they have them sign an agreement, no drugs, no alcohol, no everything, and they get equipment for the night and they can turn it in at the end of the day. So it's orderly in that there is a contract for the use of the stuff and then have the service providers come down and actually, you know, check if the person's with health problems try to find a job and have it controlled. I think if you did something like that, there would be a lot less opposition. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen the article that was in the Hawaii uh, uh, the news, newsletter that was about how bad it is on the mainland in different areas. I think a lot of that is not controlled. controlled correctly. Well, you know, we can always learn from the mistakes. Sure. Right, right, right. right. And right. And and I'm watch the news that do not work, make it bad. Right. And not duplicate it. And I think we could we could probably come up with some kind of agreement to do something like that, and we could make it worthwhile and have it a way that, that provides services to the people that we actually are on the street. Okay. And and that's just my suggestion. Put it in somewhere that's visible, highly visible, like the the and next to the police station where they can monitor and make sure everything is you know people are safe. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll take a break. I may interview people. <laughs> we're at an informational briefing where we were supposed to hear from public officials, uh, none of whom. Oh, we had one director show up. <laughs> well, we'll come back at 10 sharp. We may cut away. Let me actually read what this was supposed to be about. Take a picture right on this light. This is all the people were supposed to be. Yeah. So I think you found her. Awana, Kawakami, Bar, Thielen, yep. Nakashima, and Kaufman. Yep. Obviously, don't think. The committee wishes to hear uh, from HIC members like the governor's co uh, governor's coordinator and homeless uh, director of Department of Human Services. Director of Department of Health, Director of Department of Labor and Industrial Relations, Director of the Department of Public Safety, Director of the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, Adjutant General of the Department of Defense, Attorney General, Department of Attorney General, Superintendent of the Department of Education, the Mayor of the City and County of Honolulu, the Mayor of Kauai County, the Mayor of Hawaii County, Mayor of Maui County, and the Chair of Partners in Care, City and County of Honolulu, who didn't show up? There was one oh, that's director. Not, that's not, that's not oh, that's at 10 o'clock. So we, that's who's going to be walking through the, the door. Who here are these, people? <laughs> these are the people that weren't here. I'm going to get a, over on this side to show. Now there was one, one director that showed up. Who was that? That was the director. How do you like your community activism? <laughs> <laughs> these are the people uh, who had name yeah. tags that were going to uh, supposed to show up but didn't. Uh, Representative uh, Karen Awana, Representative Derek S. K. Kawakami, Representative Sharon E. Har, Representative Cynthia uh, Henry Thielen, uh, Representative Mark M. Nakashima, and Representative uh, Denny Kaufman, none of whom showed up. Uh, and as, as you heard, uh, 10 a.m., the, the hearing coming up, um, we'll have m all the directors, relevant directors of state depart of the state of Hawaii departments uh, should be coming up. Um, this hearing uh, was the hearing on the progress of Act 159 uh, and Act 160 uh, on uh, concerning uh, homelessness and that sort of thing, and uh, the uh, chair of the committee, uh, Rita Kabanu was a little embarrassed that no one showed up, um, so we'll be back in about 15 minutes, maybe we'll go take a walk around.
we'll see what's going on outside here. Guess you don't know where we are. We are at the state capitol, Honolulu, Hawaii, about uh, maybe half a mile from uh, the Occupy Honolulu, Thomas Square. Some people liken this to a shopping mall for legislation, and uh, sometimes it certainly functions that way, although, as you can see, people never give up hope, and uh, there were actually a number of uh, citizens at the hearing uh, wanting to either hear the information or um, testify, and since uh, no officials actually showed up, there was some uh, testimony uh, given by a variety of people, including um, Sam Mitchell, uh, representing unions, and uh, Chris Nova Smith of the Occupy Honolulu. Their ideas uh, concerning homelessness uh, apparently considered rather exotic uh, by Chair Cabanilla. Cabanilla, I think, is the way to pronounce it, although I think there's a double L. Um, so we'll probably go away for a little while. We'll be back at 10 a.m., kind of our main feature of today, when all the directors of uh, Hawaii State Departments, uh, you know, DBED uh, and uh, Labor and all that kind of stuff, are invited to come and uh, talk about... Um, Homelessness, including specifically uh, the tent encampments, tent city kind of things. Um, also invited, and who we hope to hear from, is uh, the mayor's office. Um, there's a new mayor, uh, uh, inaugurated uh, just a few days ago, uh, Kirk Caldwell, who replaces the uh, Peter Carlisle whose um, main, who, who's a former prosecutor, so whose uh, approach for it, everything was to prosecute things away and actually led a one-year battle um, with uh, the deoccupy encampment, rating it uh, 55 times uh, using uh, bulldozers, dump trucks, armed, uh, armed forces, police, of course. Um, and failed. Uh, he used his uh, Department of Housing to dehouse um, people in tent cities, taking their uh, belongings under a bill introduced by Tulsi Gabbard when she was on the council, Bill 54, which became Ordinance 11-029, that allowed, that empowered the uh, city to take possessions of homeless people, including their food, their clothing, and their tents that is being challenged in court, in federal court right now, and in fact there will be a hearing on it on January 10th, that's this Thursday, I believe. Um, so we'll see what, uh, hopefully we'll see at 10 a.m. what Kirk Caldwell, the new mayor, new mayor uh, Kirk Caldwell's uh, approach will be if they will continue uh, to use what uh, was called in the Ninth Circuit uh, by in, in LA's version of Bill 54 to be unconstitutional under the uh, Constitution of the United States, um, um, particularly violating 14th and Fourth Amendment protections against uh, unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, okay, so I'm going to cut away for a few minutes so you can grab a coffee, I guess. It's too early for a beer unless you're on the mainland. And we'll be back at 10 a.m. It's 9.48 now, so come back in about 10 minutes. Follow H. Doug uh, at Twitter or on Facebook, and uh, you'll get a notification when it comes out again. We're live and signing off now from the... Uh, Hawaii State Capitol. Legislature is not in session. It opens on January 16th. And join us for a march on the Capitol on January uh, 16th. <laughs> We're expecting some directors. Okay. So, you know, I'll, I'll be nice. Now, I'm basically 
you know, documenting the situation. So um, I'm partisan, but I'm, you know, I have an ideological point of view, but I'm here to document. Um, join me again in 10 minutes. I'm going to take a little break, and we'll be back, hopefully, with the many directors telling us what's going on with the homeless. We are in, if you want to come join us, we're in conference room 329, third floor, state capitol. And we'll see you soon. Thank you very much for joining me.